Welcome back inside Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, Arizona, where Roman Gonzalez and Juan Francisco Estrada have put on another classic. 12 rounds between two of the top 115 pounders in the world. I'm Chris Mannix, joined by Sergio Mora and one of the first families of boxing, Joshua Franco, 115-pound title holder, and Jesse Bam Rodriguez. Guys, we saw another brilliant fight between these two guys. Sergio, I'll start with you. Uh, anything different you saw in the third fight that you didn't see from the second or even the first? The fact that the first half of the fight, uh, you saw Chocolatito pretty much didn't win around in, in, in our scorecards, and I don't expect him to to fall back behind on, on the scorecards like that. So that was actually surprisingly and even more surprising, the fact that he just turned it on in the second half of the fight. We thought maybe he grew old overnight but the way he finished off that fight was vintage chocolatito and that's why it was such a close fight at least on one of one of the judges scorecards jesse you're sitting there watching uh from near ringside what are you thinking during the first five rounds when it looked like juan francisco estrada was in complete control yeah i feel like he was moving a lot more in this fight than the previous two and i thought um you know it was gonna go like that for the rest of the fight but like sergio said chocolatito was able to pick it up and finish strong like vintage chocolatito did it surprise you though i mean chocolatito is known for kind of mailing in the first round to sort of like figure out what his opponent is doing it seemed like he was just a slow start you know in the first three four five rounds before he got it going yeah exactly it looked like he was having a little trouble with the Estrada's movement but um you know vintage chocolatito he's gonna find a way to win and find a way to come back he didn't get the victory today but he finished strong Josh, what did you see in the second half of this fight? I mean, it looked like Estrada was on his way to the first convincing win, perhaps, of this rivalry. But then you saw Chocolatito get it going over the final four or five rounds. Yeah, uh, Chocolatito started picking it up. You know, he started, you know, he started a little bit late and his engine started warming up a little late. But, um, you know, even even though he, he came harder, um, Francisco Estrada was able to, you know, pick up the pace as well. How did you see this fight change? Certainly the activity of Chocolatito changed in that second half but as you're watching it what changed in the, those middle rounds uh chocolatito started you know um pick, picking his punches together started backing up uh, a shot on the ropes and he started you know putting his combinations together and he started tagging them sergio uh when you think about this rivalry this was supposed to be the fight that settled the score that we figured out who the better of these two men were i didn't walk away from that fight sure who was the best between those two do we need a fourth fight between Chocolatito and Juan Francisco Estrada. Yes, it's going to be like Pacquiao Marquez. It just leaves, you're not satisfied yet. We need closure, and there's no closure in two competitive fights. I mean, that fight was highly competitive. One judge had it a draw. The last fight could have went either way. Most people thought Chocolatito won. I mean, there's confusion there. So we need a definitive winner. And normally when fighters fight so many times, like we saw with Pacquiao Marquez, we will get a knockout. We will get a convincing winner. It doesn't have to be next, but I want to see a fourth fight. Are you expecting to see one of these guys laid out like Pacquiao did in the fourth fight against Marquez? I hope not because I'm a boxer. I know I don't want a legend or I don't want a strata to go out that way, but I do want a convincing winner. I need closure, Mannix. I need closure. We all want that. Jesse, what do you think? Do we still need closure in this rivalry? I believe so. Those three fights were, they were all of them were all of them were close and there wasn't really like a, a winner you could pick out and say, oh, he really won this fight. So I believe a fourth fight is necessary, but like Sergio said, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be next, maybe in the near, in the future, but there, there's business that has to be handled before that. Yeah, they need to finish fights the way you did against Sorung Vasai. That was some closure <laughs> yeah. in that fight. Uh, Josh, you, you probably don't want to see a fourth fight between these two guys because if you're successful on New Year's Eve, you will be the unified champion at 115. Not to look past your next opponent. That's a tough fight for you. Right. You're going into enemy territory. But hypothetically, if you got that win, would you want a piece of Juan Francisco Estrada next? Of course. You know, I was ready for him uh, before, before this fight got announced and uh, the fight didn't go through, but... Yeah, like, you know, I have, to, I, have to, I have to handle business with Ioka first, and after that, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to go after Estrada, but, you know, I got to handle business first. Jesse, how would uh, Joshua Franco versus Juan Francisco Estrada go? Great fight, by the way. We mentioned in Texas. Amazing fight yeah. in Texas. That would do a big number there. Franco beats anybody at 115. <laughs> even even me, if I move back up, he'll beat me, but he, he, he's something special, and a lot of people haven't seen that because he hasn't been given the opportunity, but come December 31st, you are going to see who Joshua Franco really is. Sergio, uh, we, we talk about maybe seeing a fourth fight, but that was the first time that I heard Chocolatito really think about retirement. He didn't really talk that way after the last loss to Estrada. He wasn't talking about this during the week. He felt he still had a lot to give. He even flirted with the idea of moving up to 118. Do you think retirement should be an option for Gonzalez? I also heard him say pay him the money. It yeah, all depends yeah. how much you make. So look, every fighter, especially great fighters at that age, when you're 35 years old, when you're so close to retirement, we want to make the most amount of money before we go off into the sunset. He deserves 
a big payday. So if you show him the money, he'll show up to fight for the fourth fight. That's just the way it goes in this uh, game. It's a price fighting. Jesse, I know you're close with Chocolatito. You both share the promoter, Mr. Honda, over at Tekken. Do you think he has, regardless of Francisco, Juan Francisco Estrada, do you think he has more to give boxing? I believe so. The way he finished, it didn't look like he was uh, on his way out or even old. He still has a lot left in the tank, so I would love to see him back in the ring. All right, Josh, tell us about how you feel going into your fight. Massive fight at 115 pounds. going to be a great crowd over in Japan. You're going over there, I believe, in a week or two. How confident are you going into this fight? Uh, I'm very confident. Uh, I've been feeling strong in the gym, inspiring. I feel like this is the best I've ever been in my my whole, my whole pro career, so I'm very confident. You know, this is a unified uh, championship, and I'm giving them, giving them my all. And, you know, after that, you know, I want, I want to go out to better fights, so I, I have to... I have to, you know, I have to win this fight. Jesse, play trainer for me for a moment. What does your brother need to do to get the win over Aoka? Um, to be honest, I've never seen much of Aoka, but I know he's a four division champ. That says a lot. But my brother, he's very, he has a high IQ. So just go in there and be you. Just it's another day in the gym. Sergio, you suck up to everyone we're standing next to. You clearly think <laughs> Franco is going to beat Ioka, right? Do I even have to ask you that? Listen, I think highly of both these brothers, and yes, I agree. I think he can go around the world, across the country. I don't know where he goes. These guys are going to take care of business. So, yes, I think uh, Franco takes care of business. All right, big fight for Josh Franco. Jesse will be back at 112 pounds next year, probably somewhere in Texas. And we will be back on the 10th with Josh Warrington in action live here on DAZN.